Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my art channel where I talk about art tutorials, art product reviews. We have some artist vlogs every now and then. One thing that I've noticed I haven't been doing enough of is drawing. So I'm going to be doing a drawing series here on the channel, starting with this video. I want to start at the very, very basics and we'll just grow from there. If you have any questions or anything that you'd like to share, just feel free to put it in the comments below. A fundamental skill to know for art is to know how to draw. It can impact your painting, your 3D work, sculpture, whatever visual art form that you find yourself getting into. But if you're giving yourself a strong foundation in drawing, you are way ahead of the game. And in order to get started, the only thing that you need, we need some paper, of course. This is just some regular old copy paper. I bought a ream of it. This was from the local Walmart. It's maybe $5 or so, and you get 500 pages. The paper is not wonderful, but the point of learning to draw is learning to see, and you can do that with this paper. There's no reason you can't. And then you want an eraser. This is a kneaded eraser, which is pliable. They come in little squares wrapped in cellophane. You'll find them sometimes in drawing kits that you can buy and a number two pencil or a mechanical pencil. If you have a number two pencil, uh, get yourself a pencil sharpener. This is the one that I'm currently using in studio that I like really well. It's a Carl Angel 5, but you can just use the little metal ones, you know, that come, come in sets or, you know, just as long as it works well and you're ready to go. So there's four things that you'll need. You'll need paper, an eraser, a pencil. Uh, this is a number two, which is a good one to start with, and a good pencil sharpener. If you wanna take it a step further, this clipboard is a good option. If you're using this type of paper, it's very inexpensive. I think I paid $1.25 for this at the Dollar Tree. And I have several of them laying around for this purpose. On your number two pencil, you'll remember, if you don't use them regularly, if you haven't used them since you were in school, they usually have a pink eraser on the end of it. And they're usually, usually thought of as being yellow. Um, this is just one that I picked up at an art function. They were giving them out, and it's a, it's, it feels nice in my hand, so I've, I've kept it with my drawing things. You may want to try out a vinyl eraser. This is supposed to be all white. By the way, this is not marbled or anything. It's just gotten dirty from use. And then just cheap pink rubber eraser. We'll try something like that. These are sanding blocks. And the purpose of these is, see how this has a nice, nice little point there? Well, if you keep using it, of course, it's gonna dull that point. But if you keep sharpening your pencil every time it gets a little bit dull, you're gonna use your pencil up quicker. So when, once this gets dull, you can just kind of sand it on there and have that nice point again. So that's what this is for. And these pages come off. They're pages of sandpaper that are stapled to the block. So that's what those are. If your paper that you're wanting to use, you wanna expand and use something bigger than this eight and a half by 11 copy paper, you can get drawing boards that are different sizes. You can also go to your local home improvement store and they will cut a piece of masonite to whatever size you need and 
this is this is one that I purchased at an art store, but it's it's a piece of masonite with a clip on it. So you can get the same thing at a home improvement store. You just tell them what size you need and they'll take care of you. Uh, blending stamps. If you look, th these have been well used, but if you look at this one, it's smooth on the end in comparison to this one, which has ridges. This is a tortillon. You, it's wrapped up, it's wrapped up paper and it has like an, a hollow on the end. You don't, I prefer not to use these because, I mean, I'm not your mama. You can do what you want, but it has these little ridges on here. And sometimes when you use it for drawings, it'll leave like these little marks that you just, I don't like. While this one will be used and it leaves smooth edges. It doesn't, there's nothing, you know, there's this little bump right here, but you can control that. But I prefer to use these blending stumps. Oh, who, who, who? Oh, hoo-hoo. And I don't think it said the weight of the paper in here. But this particular one comes with a EVA sheet. It's sort of like a plasticky rubber that you can put between the sheets if you're using markers. Um, this was not expensive, and the paper lends really well to to drawing. It it's smooth and it, it erases well. It's just a nice little sketchbook, and the pages come out. So if you're somebody that you know tacks them up on the wall, you've got that option. Another thing is painter's tape. This is a wider roll than I usually use. You can get this in one inch and you can find this in most home improvement store, hardware sections, you know. I will say sometimes I have trouble with the adhesive on here being a little bit too, too sticky. And when I peel it up, it might damage the paper. If you find that, is the case for you as well. You can heat it up with a hair dryer and it will make the adhesive release much easier and you don't have to worry about it. And one roll of this lasts a long time. And what you can do with this is like, say you take this outside and you want to draw or you've got grandchildren that might be grabbing at things. You can just, tape your piece down, you can tape your pages down in your in your sketchbook and have a nice white border around it when you pull the tape off. It it gives you several it has several uses. So might look at that. White charcoal is something else that's kind of cool. Remember all this other stuff that I'm talking all this stuff I'm talking about is extra. All you need is paper, an eraser, a number two pencil, and a pencil sharpener. That's it. All the rest of this is just distraction. Because if you can draw, these are the vital tools. These are the these are your tools. It's nice. It's nice to have a little blending stump and you can play with it some and yeah. You know. But the point is to be able to draw what you see or what you're seeing in your mind's eye. And in order to do that, you need a tool to do that. You need something that's gonna take away your mistakes because we're human and something to keep your pencil sharp. And that's it. Your other option, yes, there are more options. <laughs>
you can have my daughter made me this is having a bag to keep all this stuff in is very nice uh, once you start doing still lifes and things of that nature where you need to measure measure portions of, of an you need to visually measure things these are nice to have or you can even use uh, your pencil itself or uh, bamboo skewer works well but these are nice to have and then you've got vine charcoal and I love this stuff it's very messy though I'll tell you if you have a have vine charcoal you can just pick some of that up real easy charcoal pencils with different different numbers and letters on them and just like on regular pencils regular pencils the B you'll notice that there's a, like you'll say like 6B 6H 4H whatever um, but the B is the softer is the softer variety so in your drawing pencils I've got mine arranged here where it goes from hardest to softest so my H's are over here and my B's are over here oh. this is a 4H 2H HB 2B and then a 4B 2B or not 2B it's a 4B but once you have once you have it to a point to where you've started collecting things. You've started getting stuff. And you want to take it with you. But you're not really sure how. You have options. You can have something like this. Just a simple little bag. You can have... You can have something like this that is designed to be used for drawing materials and needs to be washed very badly because it's been used a lot. You can have something that has a strap across it like this one and then you can take it and carry it on the front of your front of your sketchbook. And in case I didn't cover it, a uh, workable fixative is a necessity if you're working with the softer leads in particular because this will keep your work from getting smeared and over time it just even if you've got it in a sketchbook if it's open and closed a lot it'll it'll start getting smeared some so get yourself a can of this some people will tell you to use hairspray don't do that no don't do um the jury's out. I know 30 years ago it was definitely a no-no because it would it just was not archival and your work would yellow by the end of a semester in school. Um, I'm not sure about the formulas now but to get yourself a can of, of just some workable fixative that's acid-free is relatively inexpensive. It's not worth having your, all of your work ruined because you used hairspray and tried to cut some edges. So, so there you go. Uh, one other thing you might want is a mirror. Woo! If you look at your work in it it will help you give you a different perspective and sometimes if you something just feels off and you don't know what it is if you look at it in a mirror sometimes you can figure it out figure out what the problem is these sketchbooks from walmart are daler rowney and they're not the best for me they're way too soft i prefer these or something like this I do have some sketchbooks that I've made. Um, if you want me to do a tutorial on how to make your own sketchbooks, just 
just let me know in the comments below and I could do that one of these days because it's not very difficult and it gives you a lot of control. You can even take this ream of paper that I bought of the copy paper and make yourself an inexpensive little sketchbook. Another thing that's on the market when you start get like I said, there's it, you start getting cluttered with all this stuff is an everlasting pencil. Um, it's actually metal and it leaves a a mark on the paper. It does erase, but you can't get a really dark. A really dark mark like you can with the graphite pencil. So, and you can also get graphite pencils that do not have wood. The whole thing is just nothing but solid graphite. So there's all kinds of options. Once you start getting into it, you'll you could be just swimming in drawing drawing materials that you don't know where they came from. But if you go back to the basics of a number two pencil, paper, an eraser, and a pencil sharpener. You always want to go back to the basics to get the most benefit. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you more than I can say. If you are new here and you have not already, I would appreciate a thumbs up, maybe a subscription, hit the notification bell, you know the routine, and I will see you next time. Bye all, take care, be safe. Mwah.